ever got in trouble, I would be there on the double just to bail you out. Hi everybody. I hope you can hear me. It's really loud. I'm walking in Times Square, actually on 44th Street, and I'm on my way to my theater. I got my sushi, and um, I'm really excited to be doing this vlog. Um, there's Matilda. Hi, Matilda. There's Mama Mia. Hi, Mama Mia. There's the Helen Hayes, the intimate Helen Hayes. James at Sea is going in there pretty soon. My theater is just beyond the Helen Hayes. It's the St. James. We're coming up on it. But I just wanted to say, I thought the first week of the vlog went really well. It went so well that I've decided to sign up for a second week. Um, I feel like I'm doing this entire thing cross-eyed. You'll let me know. Um, here's my theater, the St. James. Something rotten. It's gonna be a fun week. We have lots of birthdays this week. I'm doing double duty. That's what we call it in the business. I'm doing double duty with my PBS special um, that we're doing all the symphonic Kander and Ebb music. You'll meet all those crazy people. Hopefully get a glimpse of the elusive John Kander. And, um, you know, more backstage chaos at Something Rotten. Oh, okay, going into my theater. See you guys later. <laughs> We're in the middle of two shows. We did our matinee, um, and then we had turkey bolognese at Brad Oscar's house. Because I'm telling you, we all hang out together all the time, and we're best friends. And um, we all had so much wine. We are totally wasted right now. The show is going to be amazing, you guys. We're not drunk. Lying. We're really professional. Always professional. But Kate and I wanted to share with you um, a phenomenon that happens. Um, I think all over the Broadway community, I think there's not a not a person on Broadway who, I was going to say woman on Broadway that wears a lot of makeup, but maybe Tay Diggs is in this situation doing Hedwig right now as well. When you start to apply makeup on top of makeup for your second show, a phenomenon happens called dirt face. Dirt face. My, <laughs> my dresser is da -da 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 -da. in dirt face, which is basically applying, you know, makeup on top of makeup that you already did one show with and sweat through and you know we're under the lights and all of that and it makes us the opposite of young looking no it's more just like spackle all right getting ready for show number two on saturday bye hi everybody it's time to answer some of your questions on twitter you guys have been so sweet and um, have said so many nice things about the vlog and I totally appreciate it because I don't know what I'm doing. Paul J. Hernandez asks, here's a question for the crazy talented H. Blix and her vlog. If you could switch roles with anyone in the cast for one show, who would it be? It's a good question. I would like to switch roles with Brad Oscar. I mean, everybody's got such a great track. There's no one that I wouldn't love to switch roles with. Um, but I think Brad Oscar, because um, I, would, I would love to be in musical. There, I said it. I'm not narcissistic or, I don't know, my ego isn't out of control. But I wanna know what it's like to be out there when the audience stands up in the middle of a number. That's never happened to me before. Brad Oscar and Jennifer Holliday. So, Brett Oscar. Alex Dash asks, can't quite see. <clears throat> H. Blix, two questions. Number one, who had your dressing room in past shows? Um, Brad Oscar had my dressing room in a past show. I also share with Kate Reinders, so it's not just my dressing room. Hang on, there's someone at my door. It's Margot Lawless, my dresser. <laughs>
Again. Again. <laughs> Margot seems to be making a cameo whenever I'm filming the vlog, which I find suspect. I think she wants to be on the vlog. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hi you guys. It's Margot Lawless. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Doesn't that sound like... <laughs> We don't have fun ever here in Dressing Room 401. Never. Uh, H. Blix, your vlog was awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Can you do a tiny piece on the Leather Boy's perfect hair and Christian Borrell's arms? Many fans would be happy. Margot's laughing. So many people are so interested in Christian Borrell's arms. They're interesting. Um, I, I will do that. It's one of my goals to um, do pieces on the Leather Boys because I love them, so you must love them too. So, yes, Melissa, I'm on it. Okay, H. Blix. Um, hashtag Renaissance Woman. Question, does Christian Borrell wear a wig in the show? I've been wondering this for months. First of all, I mean, I don't know. Months? Here's the fun thing about Christian Borrell's hair in this show. Mwah! Telling something rotten secrets. Um, Christian Borrell doesn't wear a full wig. He wears a partial clip-on weave. How about that? To create a mullet effect. He grew out the top of his hair so that, um, you know, it can kind of blend in. But um, um, I think at one point he was going to grow out a, a, his own f true mullet, but I think he's now decided to just kind of keep the top long and he has a clip-on weave in the back. I'm probably not saying that right. A piece. Okay, this wraps up our Twitter question portion of the vlog. Hope you guys are doing great and um, keep those questions coming. Love ya. Oh, Eckhart, you are the very limit. Hi. Hi, Christian. I, I, didn't see you I was there. right here. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt your moment with your book and your spidey cup. Not at all. Um, so what's going on? Are we... So I, you have been so popular on the Twitter since the vlog dropped, that's what the kids say, uh -huh. um, with, with By your... By the way, this tasted terrible. I just <laughs> washed it with an old sponge. Go on. You've been so popular with your book recommendation from last week that I thought maybe we could do a weekly segment with Christian Borrell. Any ideas? I'm as... honored. Well, in, in that case, welcome to what we are calling Christian Borrell's BOOM! <laughs> Oh. Um, wherein we will discuss every week a different book. I'm going to recommend something that I have read or am currently reading. Fantastic. How's that sound? I think it sounds so great. Um, with me, as always, is my sidekick, uh, Baron von Stanchenmerken. <laughs> I, I know, I know. <laughs> just, <laughs> if you can just be patient, we'll <laughs> All right, moving right along. Um, here is my book. <laughs> Um, I have some books that I have yet to read, one of which is The Complete Works of Shakespeare. That's ironic. Uh, uh, <clears throat> um, Dune, a classic. Highly recommend. We'll get to that in week four. Oh. Um, the Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, recommended by my good friend Sutton Foster, oh. an up-and-comer. Keep your eyes peeled for her. Interesting name. She's on the up-and-up. Oh. Iliad, never read it. I am not going to get to it. <laughs> of course we have the Star Wars, William Shakespeare Star Wars trilogy. Fantastic. If you didn't know... Baron, have you read oh. it? <laughs> but it's a work, it's still... <laughs> but the idea is... <laughs> At some point we'll have a special comic book segment. This is my comic book stack. Um, the state of comics is very, very tricky right now. We'll get to some fantasy novels and all that kind of good stuff later, but this week I actually want to talk about, very briefly, about Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. Fantastic! That sounds amazing! Baron, have you read A New Earth? No, I can do that. Exact, that's exactly my point. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> He's a riot! <laughs> well, he makes a very good point. Uh, I've read this book about three or four times. Have you ever read it? No, I have not. Um, whenever I feel like I need to feel at peace out in the world, like you know how you have those moments at Starbucks? Baron, no. you know how you have those moments at Starbucks where you're waiting in a line and there are stanchions. You're standing, you're standing behind a stanchion and you're going crazy because either things aren't moving fast enough or people are driving you crazy. This is the book that gives me peace at moments like that. Oh. Fantastic. Right. Um, also, it's good with dealing with the ego. Uh -huh. It's great with dealing with uh, that voice in your head 
when you create a story where you have a, a fake argument with someone that will never actually happen, but you devote energy to having a fake argument and you get all riled up, this helps quiet that. Fantastic. These are deep thoughts with Christian Borrell from the Book Nook! Thank you, see, it's catching on. This has right. been the first edition of Christian Borrell's Book Nook! <laughs> Yes, I know I'm in a wig, wig cap. John Cariani got jealous because our dressing room turned out so great when we decorated it that he... Okay. Hi, Christian. Sorry. That John Cariani wanted, <laughs> that he wanted to decorate his dressing room, too. So he's decorated his dressing room in a log cabin theme. I don't know if it works. What do you think? And then it's just about, like, sorry, like all you have... Hi, Brian Shepard. I know, I have to change. Hi, Brooks Ashmanskis. Hi. Hi, John how Cariani. are you? Johnny, tell us about your dressing room. Oh, this is my new, my, I finally decorated my dressing room. Finally. It's past 100 performances and you finally got <laughs> exactly. it together, Cariani. I have a recliner. I can read. Why don't you tell us about that fireplace? Yeah. Oh, this is a, uh, my friend Susan Lovell um, was at a, an estate sale. Already bored. And found <laughs> this outstanding <laughs> fireplace <laughs> that... Wait, it's <laughs> That is the worst novelty plastic fireplace I've ever seen. They're really worse, though. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Well, supposed to. I, I, serial killer, Cariani. Yeah, keep clapping, Frigo. Oh. Reset it. Reset it, Johnny. John, it doesn't like you. It's done it for me. And Does everybody like it? Look, we've got a log like cabin feel. Hey, air conditioner. That's a great part. <laughs> look at these curtains. Uh, look, it's got a kicky sticky little... Sticks. It's got a little sticky stick for a curtain yeah. rod. Well, that's so nice. nice. And look, John's got paper bags out his... Or plastic <laughs> bags out his windows, too. Just makes you think about prison. <laughs> so good. I so good. <laughs> Wait. It's not did one. Oh! <laughs> Oh, God. You know, it I'm doesn't like John. Go quicker. Oh. See? It does. <laughs> Brian Shepard. Brian Shepard, come clap this on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's me. No, seriously, it's me. Um, Heidi. Um... I'm on my way to my second boy entrance. I'm walking down the stairs. It's Christian's dressing room. Um, and I have a special guest star that I'm going to interview that has been asked about. Hi, everybody. We're going underneath the stage to get to the other side. Hi. Okay. Here is our special, this is our special guest star, as wanted by the Twitter community. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, <laughs> leather boy number one, <laughs> Eric Scott. <laughs> That's There's my Eric hair Scott. though, right? You said you wanted it's to talk totally, to my hair. No, well, no, we want you, but we want to know. Oh, wait, is this a good background? No, you're totally good. Look at him, you guys. How do you keep your hair so perfect? <laughs> Is it, wait, has anybody actually seen this show? It's a hot mess online. No, but Eric also understudies Shakespeare, so he has to have the sexy flop ready to go. I, I like to think that they made him do his hair like me. Yeah, hear that? That's Will Power, you guys. Will, uh, Eric has to go in a second, Dude. but um, you look totally cute in your leather. Thanks, is it nice and cool doing this whole dance in your this leather is, costume? It's a leather, but it's one of the, it's like one layer instead of 900 layers of upholstery weight fabric, so it's actually perfectly cool. This shirt doesn't breathe, but it's, you might have noticed there's a V. Oh, there, there's a V. Okay, he has to go, but we love you, Eric. Hey, Go kick some ass. Hi. Hi, everybody. So I'm in rehearsal for our Kandra Neb concert for PBS. Um, there's John Kander in the background. There's John Kander. Um, he's at our rehearsal today. Um, and we're just going to sing a little, some songs for you. Here are some of the people that are in this cast. They will blow your mind. There's Norm Lewis. Hi, Norm Lewis. Hey! Hi, say hi to Broadway.com. Hi, Broadway.com. I'm happy to be here. Yes. I'm happy to be with all these amazingly talented and crazy people. Yes, there's Jim Clow. Hi, Broadway.com. Hi. 
Hi, we're so happy you're in this gym class. Oh, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. We're going to have fun. There's the very talented Matthew Scott. Hey, 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 He's singing all the high stuff. Hi. There's my friend Julia Marnie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, idiot. idiot. And the lovely and talented Kate Baldwin. Yay! <laughs> say that doing double duty is not for the faint of heart. I haven't stopped running. I'm eating sushi again before my show. Rinders is in the background. Hi, Hi. Kate. We're getting ready for our show. We're about to get ready. We had a little fun time backstage. We had some birthdays. We had some interviews. We had some Twitter questions answered. Keep those coming in. You got to see some Fun rehearsal for the PBS special. I leave tomorrow. Oh, it's hard. I'm so excited to sing all those songs with those people. Stay tuned for all that awesomeness. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching the vlog. Oh, I also learned what Bay was. I found out. Nicholas Rolfing, you're my Bay. Hey, Bay. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time on the vlog. Renaissance woman backstage with Harvey Blickenstaff. Waka waka waka. There's no problem that's too big. When you're married, that's the gig. So don't be a sexist babe.